beautiful Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. All day. It's not one o'clock. We, we used to do Wednesdays at one o'clock, but this is Wednesdays at one ish. And uh, we're here with Hannah. Hi. And behind the camera is Jeff. What's up? If you have any comments, Jeff will try and uh, read them out and pass them on if you have questions. And if you have suggestions, please uh, spit them out. You know, how we do it is we have this paper. And today, today what we're going to do is we're going to go look at marble, making a surface that looks like marble. That was a request from someone last week. We're also going to show you some what, what work Hannah has done on duplicating a foam case for oh. your foam. Nice. Ciao, Claudia. Hi, Claudia. And no, what was number three? Oh, it's that technique where if, uh, if something that's glass breaks, you put it back together and with uh, gold epoxy. So you see the uh, golden lines. I forget what that's called. Oh, um... It's got some Japanese names. Yes. Oh, I think it's... Kim... Kim... Oh, what is it? It was just in a... Yeah, Kintsugi. Yeah. Kintsugi? Hey, Erica. Kintsugi, I think, yeah. So we'll talk about Kintsugi and what, and what uh, again, this is Hannah did a bunch of uh, R&D, research and development. And um, you're, you're okay with... These things. With following her? Yes, Hannah knows. Uh... So, if you have anything else you want us to go over in these live videos, just let Jeff know, and we'll add it to our list. But let's start with marbling. All right, what's up, TK Creations from Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh. Tennessee's here with A. Leslie. Kimberly's, hello again. Manitou Springs, oh, Colorado. I want to go to Colorado. Cool. All my family's from Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh, there you go. So that's where my mom and dad came from, and so my grandparents are there. And... So that's cool. What's the up, parents. Juanita in Ohio? Okay, so again, thank you, Hannah, for all your work. No problem. <laughs> and look, this is some techniques. Oh. Um, Hannah was doing some ex research and experimenting on how to make our resin look like marble. So we're going to go through this this one right here. We're going to redo it on this six foot fake countertop. It's MDF. Oh wow! Board. It's been prepared uh, with tape around the edge, just sticking up. So this is the same thing you do with your countertop. Nice. So. Hey, Miriam and uh, Richard. And do you want to start mixing up our resin? Athena Edmonton. Edmonton's in the house. So let's do, uh, well, let's go 24, 24. Okay. So that's 22. That's 24 of resin. There you go. Okay. And you match it by volume or weight, Hannah? Volume. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so Hannah's mixing up our, our resin. Um, we did some math. This is about six feet by one and a half feet, which is nine square feet. Uh, What's up, Season of the Witch? Welcome back. Oh, hello. And D, Kathy, all you guys. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. Yeah. It's nice to, nice to have virtual internet friends. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's what we need in a pandemic world. Yeah, so Hannah's going to mix up the resin and add white to it. We're just going to try oh. and do this marble here. So it's some rose gold and white. So this is what Hannah did, actually did yeah. this. So these, So we have... Two different, sty two different styles here, Dave, or is this two different, yeah, what, uh, or just different colors, or styles, techniques, what is that? Nice one, too. Oh, wow. They're all three different styles and techniques I tried out. Like yeah? Some different colors. Nice. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, we're going to do this one for today. We're going to do this one. Here we go, gang. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so while Anna's mixing up our white that we're going to use, let's go and talk about um, foam cases. So, gang, get your hand for your work. Here's what we have. This is a foam case made out of our resin. We bought a, diff a couple of different foam cases to test it on. Hmm. Basically, where is that block? We'll pour, we'll pour another one today, but it's with mold making material. So this is the two-part silicone. Nice. See this stuff? And basically, anytime you're duplicating something, you need to make a box out of something. Mm -hmm. So this is foam pour and uh, packing tape, and then it's been lined with packing tape too, so that the so that the silicone will peel right off, nice and easy. Gotcha. So the process is, we're not going to do this today, but the process is we glue, glue that to the bottom, mm -hmm. pour your mold making material on top, and then when it cures, pop it up, pop up your phone, and then you can re-pour in here. Wow, look at that. So there you go, yeah. there's the whole phone case right there. Yeah, and that's called a one-part mold. 
because we have a completely flat back surface on the phone, we can do a one part mold, right? Mm -hmm. And it came out pretty good. I might just do some sanding along the edges. Uh, it, the phone cases are kind of tricky because they have buttons and holes on the side, but it is completely possible. So I thought that we would use the same marbling technique to do another phone case. Oh, you want to do like the like a marbling look to yeah. the phone case? We'll just use the same thing that we're doing for the countertop. Yeah, the goal here is you're yeah customizing your own phone cases, which is actually a yeah. really cool craft. Cool, love it. Great. All right, now that we're off that case, no, nah, it's stupid. Sorry. No, that's good. No, good it job. wasn't. I appreciate well, it. Let's look at this uh, gold thing. Okay, we're not gonna, gonna do this today, but hmm. if something breaks, you fix oh, right. it with gold epoxy. Um, and the key is to let your art resin sit for two to three hours. Once you mix it, mix in the gold, let it sit for two to three hours so that it's really thick. Hmm. And then uh, it won't run. Oh, and then you apply it. And oh, then I see. you apply it. Oh, okay. And fix your glass, see? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's a... And is gold... Uh, you know, the standard, like is it yeah, gold, I mean, gold is the technique or? It's this whole philosophy around Kintsugi. Mm -hmm. that if something breaks, you can fix it and make it look beautiful again, but you still see like the scars, you know? Yeah, the imperfections, but it's yeah. still, yeah, it's just part of it. It becomes part of it, right? Yeah, I like that, nice. Very nice. Okay, so, um, why don't I do, do this part? So, spray paint is recommended for doing a color for marbling. I'm gonna get a cloth or a rag or something. Okay. I use paper towel too. Now. Paper towel? Mm -hmm. And what you doing? Mixing up the resin. Nice. <laughs> so why do we have to measure in volume and not weight? Is that some science question? <laughs> <laughs> is that a science question? Well, because actually the resin and the hardener are different weights. So if you were to do it by measuring, um, they're not equal. Because they're not equal, uh, it's best to go with volume. Is that right, Dave? Is that That's good right. enough? I mean, you could calculate it, but why would you need to do those numbers when all you have to do is volume? So much easier. Yeah. Okay. Ex can visualize it, yeah. Exactly. All right, what do we got here? So. Okay, I'm going to get this outside. Okay. It's kind of stinky. Cool. Follow me. To the door. The wall of hearts. Okay. Basically, we're taking the spray paint and putting it in the bottom of this cup. I just have this rag over top so the mist doesn't go everywhere. Okay. But you see, we just want the liquid. Oh, I see. You're putting it. Oh, you're putting it in the cup just to get the liquid. Yeah. To accumulate at the bottom there, and then you're gonna. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So he's just using the rag to protect for the spray, spray itself. Oh yeah. And this is a rose gold spray paint. All right. But for whatever reason, the, the, the chemical makeup of the spray paint works really nice for marble. There's our sign and if anybody wants to visit us, just look for the big red heart. Yeah, water down Ontario, Canada. You want to wear masks, isn't it great? Yeah. I mean, part of the reason we stopped doing these live videos is because people kept commenting and being like, you guys should wear masks. Mm. And that just became annoying. So you know what? We might have made it through this pandemic. What do you think, Jeff? I think so, man. I think, I think so. we've weathered the storm. And it's just good. You know, the sun's out and things are doing good. Yeah. Come to, is that KY? Is that Kentucky season of the witch? KY? Yeah, KY. That's got to be Kentucky, right? Okay. Kentucky it is, all right. Yeah, right, Richard Martin says, what pandemic? Maybe we should actually ban that word from now on, eh? Yeah. Okay. So. How much spray do you put in the cup? So let's take a look. Where is the cup? There we go. That's what Dave's got in there. Oh, sorry. A little bit go. small way. A little, yeah, so it's good. Oh, okay, so you don't need a ton, but. No, you don't need a ton. You're just gonna dip your popsicle stick in it and drag it through. And oh, okay. It spreads out on its own. Very nice, there you go. Sweet. Okay, so cool. It's exciting. Okay, so we're adding white 
Oh, okay. And this is just resin and white, eh? Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Season of the Witch. Okay, so you just put a little bit of resin tint white in there, mixing it up. Yeah, and we primed our board white too, so oh. it wouldn't be uh, transition at all. Good point. This is just a gesso. So, Jana's asking what brand of paint. So, spray paint we went with is. Oh, here we go. I don't think it matters. Okay, Dave's saying, yeah, it doesn't think it matters. That's the one he went with the rose gold from Rust Oleum. And that's what we did. Yeah, I mean, you might get different effects with the spray paint, so there might be a bit of experimenting. Mm. Find one that you like and then kind of follow along. Okay. There we go. Wow. Good job. This is cool. Yeah. The board yeah. is gessoed, yeah. Are you ready? Here we go. First, I'm going to pull oh. it. Oh, okay. So there it is. Whoa. All right, I'll let that settle in more. Okay. Okay. Wow. The base white. Think any more in there, Anna? Yeah? I don't know. I'm going to start spreading kind of. Ah! <laughs> oh. Okay. Good. Do I put a white paint down before I gesso? There we go. Oh, no, the gesso is your white paint. There you go. Okay. Okay. Cool. That'll do. I see. So then, th so the reason for gessoing a board is that, in this case, Dave, if you so if you spread the resin like this, and then you add your paint, and you're kind of moving along with the popsicle sticks, I guess there's a chance if it wasn't gessoed and have a white background, you would see the wood underneath. Yeah. And, okay. Okay. Got it. It's just a nice white base coat. Got it. Because the wood is brown, right? Mm. I primed a darker one with black, for example. Okay, there you go. So this one had black underneath. It wasn't wood as well. So Hannah prepared that one with black so that as she moved the gold colors uh, and the blues and everything, uh, that way we'd have a darker background, not yeah. wood. Uh, someone asked, sorry, I just missed a question. What was it? Sorry, my brain is not very good. Uh, Tanya upstairs. Oh yeah, Tanya's there. Hopefully she might be on a call. We'll see what Tanya should be watching. Tanya. Um, oh, what, uh, oh, what type of wood? I think someone asked. What type of wood? This is just an MDF. Um, we were going to do it on a canvas. It all depends. Like the idea is that you're actually redoing your countertop. Mm. So, I mean, just a, on a hard surface, on any hard surface will be fine. Any hard surface will be fine. But MDF is a common building material. It's cool. So this will, yeah, so that the combination of using resin gives you the freedom to do some sort of a cool pattern, but then at the same time, you're protecting your countertop, I guess, right? With a nice shine and yeah. hard, a hard surface. Yeah, it can look like, it can look like very convincing marble, even though it's not marble. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And this is something we've never really done because there's lots of companies that sell like countertop epoxy mm. and, and so there's so much information on the internet about doing this kind of thing. Well, if you want to do it, just keep looking. There's Tanya right there with some information oh, for you guys. Look at that. Okay, look at that. It's beautiful. Boom. All right. Hannah, do you want to do the honors with the gold? So now we have a white, a white tinted topping here with the art resin. And we've got, Hannah now has got the, here's the spray paint. So once again, just so you, everybody who's catching in here, that's how much spray paint we've got in there. She's not grabbing that much, putting it on the popsicle stick. Take it away, Hannah. All right, so much pressure. Yeah, there is. Pressure. Everybody's watching. I can't believe how many people are watching. Okay, here we go. Start veining it through. And any kind of pattern that you want it to go in, we can keep adding more for it to get more opaque and more metallic. Mm. It's pretty satisfying how awesome it can look quickly. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're mimicking like a look, right? And you actually, if you actually come up with it, or if it looks like it, that's really rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> 
throw some in here. Okay. I'll grab some too. Sweet. It's a big board here. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of play around with different techniques uh, across this whole six foot board. And you can see what, what happens before you do it yourself. Sweet. All right, Dave's going to start on this end. Here we go. Some more of the rose gold paint. Here we go. Did you, use, did you use a blow dryer at all, Hannah, as well, or no? I didn't on this one, no. Okay. Let's see what happens when, of course. Did you find, then, does it uh, spread out on its own a lot after? Uh, without the blow dryer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol on it afterwards, and then keep going in with the spreader to make it look how you want it to, and that helps it spread out on its own. Gotcha, gotcha, but gotcha. But it does kind of spread, like, as soon as the alcohol touches the... Yeah, the, there's one more step to do. Okay. This is kind of funny. Okay. See, and that's a good example then, as Dave was dragging his popsicle stick, then if you didn't gesso it, so if you didn't prime the board essentially, you would maybe see the wood underneath. Mm. Oh, this is looking good. Look at that, everybody. Not getting a lot of comments, everybody. Come on, people. What's up? Talk to us. They're in awe. They're in awe. That's what it is. Boom. Okay. I'm over here. Okay. I'm going to set sprayer. All right. Okay, so what? So now we got... Okay, so what do we got here? So this is... What was the word to use? Isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. And then this is from the dollar store, rubbing alcohol. I don't know if that's the same thing. Yes, the resin on top um, does have resin tint. Our white resin tint is inside of that. Yeah. So we've tinted the resin white. Yeah, we just have this resin tint white to make it opaque white. All right. All right. Okay, so now Dave's spraying the isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we didn't treat the wood, it was just a dry piece of uh, MDF, I didn't believe, Dave? That's right. Yeah. We just painted it white only for the purpose of making it uh, white so that we wouldn't see the wood color through the resin. Just to, that's the only reason we did that. And sorry, the, any reason for the alcohol, Jan is asking? It, it creates an effect. You know, if you can start to see it, it. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, right in there. Yeah. Almost like like kind of a cells and lacing kind of thing here, right? It disperses it a little bit, and then when you take the spreader afterwards, which we're going to do, and you kind of move the white resin around on top of it, you'll notice that the spray paint is more set in its pattern than the resin is, if that makes sense. So it just makes a different kind of technique once you use the spreader on top of it. Okay, so great. Can we see that? Uh, let's see the effect of that. <laughs> You can kind of just move it around and then it kind of like comes with you as you move the spreader afterwards and blends itself into the white so it's not just big white chunks and then things. Nice. Looking kind of like marble, eh? Mm hmm, totally. Do I only apply the alcohol on the gold part? Um, so, if you want to remove bubbles from resin, one way is with the torch. Another way, like if they're doing a big industrial floor, they'll spray alcohol over top because the alcohol actually 
makes the bubbles release. Mm. So if you get the alcohol on the white, white surface, it's not gonna hurt it, it actually will help get rid of all the bubbles. So, mm. um, I mean, you're spraying it on the gold for the effect, but then it also will have a secondary action of getting rid of bubbles. So don't be scared if it gets on the white part too. There we go, nice. There we go. It's good to have you back, Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch. So, I feel like I've got to come up with a nickname. For her? Him. Him? Season of the Witch. Any bad nickname in itself? I guess so. I guess we can just call him the Witch. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Season. He wants to be seasoned. Okay. Don't think you just leave it. It does its own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Jeff, what do you think? I think it's really cool. So you just look in here in comparison. Yeah, it's totally marbly. It's totally just fucking. You got yourself a rose gold marble countertop. Yeah. Yeah, I really feel like less is more. Like, you know, yeah, you don't want to overdo it. That we, we did a bit less. Mm. And turn that cover stuff with some white. Thanks, Juanita. Juanita likes it, guys. Oh, Juanita, you're so sweet. It is looking good though. You're right. And, but see, as as it spreads a bit more, there, Dave. Like, yeah, in here, right? This looks really good that it spreads a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely. Next season. More. Yeah. More. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, you got a, actually a really nice pattern here going on. See, it is. It, yeah, the, as it's spreading right now, I feel like it's becoming way more marbly. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Like just before, I was like, okay, I could. Yeah, this is really good. That is, that's great. That totally is a marble Canada. Boom. Bar. Let's, let's build a bar, Dave, here at the office. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, for, especially for Caesars. We need it for... Caesar Day? We're having Caesar Day, everybody. All right, I'm going to put some marbling into oh. our phone case. I agree, Dee. It is looking better with time. Exactly. Thanks, Jenna. So once we pop out this phone case, there will be some a bit of sanding to do to curve out the edges. Mm. But uh, it is possible. Get that cool. Okay, alcohol. That looks great too. Really good. Hmm. See, yeah, look at this. Look at this thing, everybody. See, how it just it's just subtly changing, and yet it's fully. Is art resin sold in Mexico? Yes, it is. Um, it's on Amazon Mexico, and I think there's an artresin.com.mx. Boom. Yeah. In Mexico. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. One more spray. There okay. There you go. Marbled phone case. Really good. Mm. Really cool. Well, that's all we had planned for this last video. Boom! Marbling, phone case, and talk about the uh, Kaya Sarah or? Uh, Kasugi? Kintsugi? Kintsugi, I think. Kintsugi. Um, we'll try to do this again next week. Let us know what you'd like to try, otherwise we'll just resin a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But it's nice to be back. And we survived the virus. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. For all those who did survive. And we'll see you next week. Talk to you later, everybody. Thanks, Anna, for all your hard work. No problem. All right, guys. Stay safe out there.